but I like it. Oh, watch out fast. I can talk about it. you don't already know, we have some of the members here. We have Bill Peck, we've got Amanda Ferguson, we've got Sharon, I'm forgetting names, we got OTBA and OTPS over here. Um, and yes, Judy Paper. I was like blank. I was totally blank when I got to Amanda. I don't know why. Um, so we're just going to quickly go through what this proposal is, see what your feedback is, and, and since we do have some new members on council, I want to start with the uh, very brief run through of where we've been with Holiday at the Hall in the past. Uh, before 2003, before we opened the City Hall in Old Town, there were multiple events held around the community. Uh, some years as many as a dozen, but usually about eight. And uh, they were held individually. Some of them were doing okay. Some were struggling pretty badly. Uh, they were competing with each other for market, for audience. You see what they are there. You got the stroll, you got the tree lighting, the city did, the home tour, festival of trees, motorcycle toy run, breakfast with Santa, the Nutcracker Ballet, and then there was a holiday arts and craft show actually in November. Um, that was looked at for being merged in. Well, in 2003, we opened City Hall and had an opportunity. We knew we had to move the tree lighting. We had an opportunity, we thought, to bring some of those smaller events under a single umbrella, let them still operate in many ways as an individual event, but share marketing, share resources, share a venue and a location to try and build a crowd. So we worked those community events, uh, held a single event. It was actually, that year was a Friday evening, a very, very cold Friday evening, and a Saturday. Uh, we brought in six existing events. Uh, we added an outdoor stage, we added outdoor vendors, we added the parade. Uh, craft Show and Nutcracker stayed by themselves just because of scheduling. They couldn't work out. And by the way, in 2003, we won a national award for best event in our population category for putting this thing together. Now since then, uh, it's only been one day. Friday night was bitterly cold, nobody stayed, and so we learned then Friday nights just weren't a good idea for this particular event. So we went straight to Saturday, first Saturday in December. Some activities have, uh, have moved off uh, over the years. We've added some other activities throughout the year. Uh, the peak of our crowd was about 14,000 one year when we had perfect weather. Uh, generally, it was somewhere around 8 to 10 was much more common. Uh, some years, if it was cold enough or drizzly, even less than that. Now, in 2010, uh, at Council Retreat, we were directed to make Western Days a signature event for the city, something that maybe not as large as Great Fest, but as identifiable as Louisville as Great Fest is a grapevine or the Balloon Festival in Plano, or Boomtown in, um, in Addison. So make Western Days a signature event, and to do that, we moved resources from the Holiday at the Hall event, which is a good event, but mostly a community event, as it was structured at the time, to the Western Days, which has more tourism potential, and is just a larger, easily marketed event. In 2011, with the opening of this facility we're in now, we're able to actually bring back a few of the activities at Holiday at the Hall that we had dropped off in 2010, but it's still, as you, uh, those of you who are here this year, you know, it was from 7 in the morning until a little bit afternoon. It had the, uh, it had the breakfast, it had the, uh, the toy run, the parade got rained out, the tree trimming got rained out. We had Santa here in the building, the OTPS had the gingerbread, and I think the rain kept some people away, because carrying a gingerbread house in the rain is not really good for your injury. Um, just for numbers so you know, uh, the, the festival budget grew over the years as we expanded into a full day's event. Until 2009, it was $110,000, all from the hot fund. Um, it was reduced to $30,000 in 2010. We only spent about half of that, um, largely because we just didn't bring back some of the activities that are very costly. And uh, 2011, we kept the budget at $30,000, spent most of that, but it was focused in this building. Uh, you see there uh, the events that we had, the tree trimming that got rained out, the, uh, the parade, the toy run, which got rained out. Uh, we did, however, have the breakfast with Santa, the performances in the building. We had the crafts, the Santa photos, and the gingerbread houses. So that's where we are at this point. Now, we've been approached <coughs> since then by, uh, by this group here, and uh, 
talked internally with staff as well about things that we can do to maybe expand the appeal of the event without expanding the city's exposure on the event. Because uh, we've learned that the full day event is a lot of fun, but there's issues with it. We had the big gap in the middle when people went home. And so we had about an hour and a half, but it was just staff going, where did the people go? And they'd all come back to the parade. So we've kind of learned some lessons from what we tried in the past, what does and doesn't work. What we're looking at is uh, working with OTBA and OTBS to bring back the, uh, the Old Town Holiday Stroll, or the Old Town Christmas Stroll. It's going to be their event, they'll get to pick that name. And uh, having afternoon and evening activities centered around that. Uh, we would participate in some of our activities, such as the tree lighting and the parade, um, and we got some, you'll see some details coming up, but it would be an OTBA event that we would provide support for. And we still do the morning activities here in this building, uh, similar to this year with the exception being the parade would move to later in the day. So here's what we're looking at. For the morning event, it would be basically what we saw this year. Uh, we'd have Breakfast with Santa with the Kiwanis Club. We'd have the community performances inside the performance hall have the uh, children's crafts, some are Kiwanis, some are city. Uh, Santa photos uh, and motorcycle toy run would uh, still be held and still be centered around this area. That would all wrap up pretty early. That would wrap up right after lunch when the motorcycles got back from their run. Then there'd be a break without an event. Um, here's the proposed schedule. Could vary a little bit. So you're talking eight to noon is the whole thing. And noon is when the bikers have their lunch in their tent and then they leave. So the activities in this building would actually be from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Then the motorcycles do their run. That's all we do in the morning, kind of what we did this year. Yeah, is that very much different from this year? Uh, no, that's very, almost identical to what we did this year. The difference being the timing of the toy run is a little bit different. And uh, we tried to stretch it out to reach into the parade that was going to start at 12.30. And then, of course, the parade got rained out. And the idea then was to have the tree trimming ceremony after the parade, which also got rained out. So this is a slightly shorter time frame. Um, but it's a little bit more condensed, and it has the activities that people have shown up for, the ones that people have said they want. So then we go to the afternoon and evening. you got a gap in the middle when people weren't staying for the festival anyway, so they can go do what they're going to do during the middle of the day, hopefully go to the businesses and spend a lot of money for Christmas shopping. That's what we'd like them to do. And uh, then they come back, and we kick off the afternoon event, which, again, would be the stroll with some city elements also worked in. We would do the parade. We would do the tree lighting. We would still do the Santa photos. Now, there might be a little bit of budget impact. We don't know exactly what it is. It's certainly not going to be the 110000 you saw. But uh, because we're now doing things two times during the day, uh, a little bit of decor, a little bit of lighting, there's going to be probably some budget impact, and we can come up with numbers on that if this is the direction we go. Um, everything else, OTBA and OTBS would coordinate. Uh, that would include the stroll to be inside the various businesses. That would include uh, some children's crafts. There's some ideas about how we can make that very popular. The gingerbread contest. Uh, any entertainment that's going on out there would, uh, would be done through those organizations with our support where it's needed. So we wouldn't have the outside vendors. We wouldn't have an outdoor stage. It would be more of the stroll as it traditionally was held. Proposed schedule, um, great, 3 o'clock, which would kick off the afternoon activities. 3 o'clock is the time we've had it in the past. And uh, it's a good time because the parade then ends 4.15, 4.30, before it starts to get dusk. Excuse me, and it gives people a chance to enjoy the whole parade without having to bring in lighting. Uh, have the tree lighting at 5.30, uh, right there at Ferguson Plaza where we've been having it uh, up until last year. The stroll hours, and again, we're not dictating this, this is just the, the general timeline. Three to eight with activities in the businesses. Children's crafts, if any of you have taken a child to Epcot uh, in Orlando, you know that in the International Showcase, where kids used to be miserable and bored and dragged through the park, they now have craft stations in each location. And in fact, it's usually a craft that you create, say a mask or a, a puppet at one country, and then you add to it in each country. And now the kids race out there and they just love going to all the craft stations. So imagine the kids dragging their parents to every single business because they want to get their craft completed at every single business. Um, the window displays that are, if, if you missed them this year, you missed out something fabulous. They're terrific, they're getting better every year. I know it's going to continue to grow. Uh, the gingerbread <coughs> contest, the um, Santa buttons or Santa photos, again, details still to be worked out, but Santa, would, we would be running, and OTBA would help us find a location to do that. Uh, and then 8 o'clock, it wraps up. Uh, GLCT, the Greater Louisville Community Theater, often has a performance of some type on that day, and if they have a uh, performance at 8 o'clock, it's a nice ending to the day. 
So the city would do all the morning activities uh, in conjunction with Kiwanis on the breakfast, would operate the parade, operate the tree lighting, would provide some decor and photos and Santa for the evening. Um, so we'd bring him down from the North Pole for the morning, we'll just keep him the rest of the day. Uh, we would coordinate with DCTA if, if possible. Now, DCTA this past year, uh, kind of as a last minute thing, did some activities with the Denton Christmas event that they have in the square right by the main station. And in fact, they now are doing a joint marketing package with Denton CBD. I'll be meeting with DCTA next week to expand that to Louisville. And what they did is they decorated their trains with uh, snowflakes that kids at schools had made. They uh, put up a table at their transit station up in Denton and gave out coffee, cocoa, and cookies and greeted people, said Merry Christmas, glad you're here. And they sent an alert, an email alert to their rider base saying, while you're in Denton, go to this event. Now they did send an email out to their ridership for our event. The problem was only one train on Saturday got to Louisville in time that you could actually go to our event. So they sent it and it basically said, here's a great event. If you can get on this exact train at this exact time, then you can come enjoy it. Uh, we've talked to them, they are open to doing more, and we're going to be meeting with them next week to see what they're open to. Uh, so we'd like to involve them if we can, and we would coordinate that. Um, Santa Shuffle, some of you are familiar with it. Uh, I know Councilman Ferguson called me because this was a new concept. Um, we did this about six years ago, working with the businesses in OTBA. We prepared a, basically a stamp card with about a dozen businesses on it. And uh, participants, if they went to seven of the ten, they get the stamps. If they went to seven out of ten, they can enter a drawing. I think it was a TV set the first year. And uh, on the back were discounts for the entire month of December for those same businesses. Hopefully, the people would keep the card and use those uh, discounts. Uh, did it for a couple of years. Just it's, it's difficult to coordinate. It just takes somebody with a lot of energy. And um, one year it was Heather, who certainly had energy for all of us. Um, if we can bring her back, we would get fired up. But uh, if the Santa Shuffle program is something OTBA wanted to bring back, we would be able to design those cards and coordinate that with them. Uh, and then we would do event marketing and advertising. We're going to be doing it for the morning anyway. We'll do it for the afternoon also. Uh, it would be marketed as two great events, one general location on the same day. Uh, road closures would be a little bit different than we've had in the past. Uh, Church and Charles Streets, which is... Um, uh, in front of City Hall and in front of the Art Center would close, it says Friday evening. Oh, because I had to set up a tent, that's right. Because we set up the big tent for the toy run. So Friday evening after the businesses are closed, after the, the, the people have gone home, and then all day uh, Saturday up to the end of the toy run, same closure we've had this year. Same closure we've had for a number of years. Main Street would only have to close um, at about noon to get ready to clear the road for the parade, and then it would stay closed until the end of the stroll so that people walking back and forth can do so in safety. So Main Street would close roughly noon till about probably 9 or 10 o'clock at the latest. So a shorter closure than we had for the full day festival. Uh, expenses, and a lot of these are things we've already budgeted for. Uh, holiday parade float, the Santa float, is something that we always have done anyway. Um, We've looked at adding some little mini floats. I mean, those are the things you've seen that, it, like a golf cart, and they put a giant head over the top of it, and you know, there's Santa's head going down the street. Uh, they're actually fairly affordable, and they add some color to the parade. Um, some stipends for high school bands. Louisville High School Band is great coming to the parade every year, even though this is the day of all region, so their very best performers are competing for all region. Um, other high school bands, there's a few in the area that don't have a Christmas parade in their community, such as Hebron, uh, like Dallas last I looked, uh, Carrollton. Um, we'd like to bring them in, and they just haven't done it because, well, we're not in Louisville, why would we do that? Uh, but in talking with Marty, uh, no, that's the auditorium, with the uh, director of the Louisville High School Band, whose name I'll remember after I'm done, um, in talking with him, we said if we were to pay a stipend to their travel funds, they're all trying to raise money for travel, he said, yeah. If you offered them no more than 500 bucks, you probably would be able to get one or two more high school bands. For a parade, that's, that's gold. So we're going to try that. Uh, the department's put some floats in, and you've seen those floats. Uh, this year you probably saw them in the parking lot, but they are fabulous floats, the best floats in the parade. Um, barriers and, and security for the parade, especially in the middle of uh, Main Street where it gets very narrow, the little bottleneck, we always put up security there. That's a budgeted item. Um, Bringing Santa in, but now keeping him longer instead of just having him in the morning, having him in the, in the evening also. And we would uh, need a little bit of budget for decor. 
So a lot of this already is covered. Again, there will probably be, if we go with this proposal, be a little bit of budget impact. We don't know what that number is, but it, it would be under 20 and quite possibly under 10. We just don't have, don't have those exact numbers. Additional to the 30? Yes, sir. That's correct. That's correct. Um, and remember, by comparison, the full day event got up to 110,000 at one point. And that was from 7 in the morning until 7 at night. So, uh, DCTA, I already mentioned these. I forgot I had the slide in here. I added this. But they have shown some willingness to work with us. We'll meet with them next week, meeting with Dee and, and uh, Christina to talk about what options there might be. OTBA on this, and there's a letter, I think it's actually in your packet, uh, there's a letter from the board uh, talking about uh, their commitment to solicit businesses to participate. If you have a stroll and only two businesses to participate, there's no point in strolling. Uh, very quick event that way. Uh, that they would help us get support with the businesses for the road closures. Anytime we close a road, somebody's going to be unhappy. Um, pretty much they're used to it, but it helps if we've got some, uh, some people in the business the community uh, being our advocate on that. Uh, marketing their existing customer base, whether it's putting a sign up or mailing or emails, a lot of uh, a lot of the businesses now do a lot of social media, so that increases our marketing outreach. Um, so helping us find locations for any indoor event activities. Uh, obviously, the the gingerbread houses need to be inside somewhere. Uh, the Santa photo area ideally should be inside that way it's weatherproof, and. Um, that we have no tinting, no lights, everything is indoors. So they, they said they would help us locate and secure those areas. Um, coordinate the Santa Shuffle program if they choose to. That's you know, going out and getting the businesses signed up, participating, make sure they actually participate, and then we can help with the cards. But they would print the cards. And then also TPS would continue to do the gingerbread house. So that is the extent of the proposal we've got. Just a quick recap. Two different activities, morning, afternoon. Same day, same general location, one centered in this building, one centered in the Old Town core. Uh, marketed together, but a, a very tight partnership with OTBA in uh, making the second event as successful as it can be. Yes, sir. I remember uh, being a part of Old Town Business Association and doing the volunteer stuff back in the you know, 80s and 90s. And I believe that in the 90s, though, we were already up to year 18 or 19. Like 2002 was going to be 22nd year. That was the year we didn't have it because of the road closures or whatever. So, I mean, it's been going on a long time. They'd always been called the Christmas stroll until you know, the holiday. Well, holiday. and it still was called the Christmas stroll at that point, but it was an activity within the larger umbrella. And I think ultimately it was not intended to happen, but the identity waned. It faded out as it got seen as a single festival. So some businesses still did stroll activities, it just no longer was called that. And we did work till I think we closed up about 10 o'clock at night, putting up to about midnight. Um, I don't, I do like the idea of the DCTA working with them, trying to get people from other communities up here, that would be great. And my, I, you have my support on getting that done. I'm sure you have everybody else's also. Um, I'll let them speak for themselves. So, so. I don't like the idea of no vendors. Streets. Um, that was one of the things I heard complaining last time. One of the vendors, kettle corn guy, you know, uh, arts and crafts people, whatever. I, I would like to see that still. The tents, get them up there. You know, charge them whatever it takes to get it put up and stuff. But I think the people do come here and that will probably stay those three hours instead of closing it down to go see the vendors. Uh, I, I think you know, however we're going to do that, we're going to lay them out. I definitely would like to see vendors. I don't want to see them go. I, it's I a major expense. I, 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 I understand, but that's the number one complaint I heard that people wanted to see. Perhaps generators and just a lot of expense. They can bring their own, you know, power grid. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it didn't work with having the gap in there. As you just said, you started off saying they left. And it didn't work. So the vendors didn't so like it. Right. Well, the vendors didn't like it, and neither did people because they left. Because there wasn't anything going on. So one question I've got is why we won't do that again, have the gap in there. You have two different audiences, as we've identified in this. Your audience in the morning really gears heavily toward, well, the bikers, obviously, are, are going to go where the bike run is. Right. Um, right. But the majority of our audience in the morning, according to our surveys, are kids, are families of young children, children 10 and under, is the vast majority. And when we did surveys for the full day festival, the afternoon event was largely families with older kids, families and adults with no kids. So you had two very distinct groups. And I think some of these businesses might not necessarily want a bunch of two-year-olds running around at, at the breakfast. That's exactly what we want. But that's the same ones that come to the parade? Uh, somewhat, yes. Somewhat. And that's why the parade is early in the afternoon. The question would be whether you can have an evening or afternoon event for the kids. It's like the breakfast. <laughs> My challenge is, as a family, it's, it's family it's it's just just staying all day is not going to happen. So, i got to pick one or the other. <laughs> That's what we're going to eat, too. <laughs> that, that, I guess that's why I'm kind of like, a lot of the same people that come to the breakfast of Santa are the people that go to the parade. And that's why we were ending the parade, or ending the morning activity. We were having a parade. And he just said, a lot of times with kids, young kids, you're not going to bring them out here to breakfast and then go home and come back to the parade. No, but, but there's the way, the way this lays out makes sense to me. What didn't make sense to me was when we did it a couple of years back and we had like a three hour gap in the middle of the afternoon. That's, then, we right here. That's because you can't. No, we we had, no, it was like from 11 to 3 and then the parade came. <coughs> this has the parade going at noon, right? 